Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to Voices from the Bench, episode number 86. My name is Elvis, and finally joining me again is... My name is Barbara. I missed you. Welcome back, Barb. Thank you for carrying down the court for us. I appreciate all your hard work. Great interviews, too. Yeah, it was really a good time at the Eastern Conference. I talked to a lot of fantastic people. I wish you were there. I really do. Probably would have talked to twice as many. I saw a bunch of pictures. I saw Martha Martin posting, um, everybody speaking, plus you speaking, and some interviews. It looked like it was a great, great, great time. I will be there next year, I promise. Yeah, it was a good show. I I was really, not surprised, but I was glad to see that it was so good. Yeah, this is really a super strong show. Yeah. Visions is coming up. LMT's coming up. So we got a lot going on. We're already lining up a bunch of shows up until May. It's going to be great. Yes, we're going to be booked. We're going back out on the road. Yeah, baby. You've been on the road, but now I'll, I'll be partnering up with you on the road. Yeah, but luckily, we got two months off here, so nothing nothing till January. Got it. And then we're booked, so come find us. We'll be letting you know where we are, everybody. But this week, we have two more conversations I got while at the amazing Whitmix Digital Forum. First up is the Williamson family. We had Mark Williamson on the podcast before. Yep, I remember. Yeah, we actually talked to him in Chicago. Yep. And he was actually speaking at the Whitbix Digital Forum. But I was able to grab him, and he sat down with his wife, Allie Williamson, who is doing some fantastic training over at the Ottawa Dental Laboratory. She utilizes the PTC system. She's running a training program. That I know every lab wishes they could send every employee through. No doubt about that. (laughs) I know we've talked about it before, Barb, how we train these employees with over the shoulder. Yeah. And it's just an easier way to do it. But listen to Allie. God, I wish I could have her come into my lab and teach everybody. It's fantastic what she's doing. Can't wait to hear the interview. Sounds awesome. We did PTC at one point, but we don't have anything that's actually run like what she's doing. So let's listen and see all about it. Yeah, she talks about her history in the industry and how she trains and encourages everyone to get their CDT. Awesome. And also what I always enjoy listening is how the married couple are able to work together. That's always a hoot. I would agree. (laughs) During the interview, you actually hear kind of the horn sound for starting a horse race it's in the background it is whitmix trying to tell everyone to get back into the program that's how they did it so we're not actually at the racetrack recording just that sounds in the background (laughs) yeah that's kind of cool it's like you're corralling your folks to get back into the learning. You know, Cal Lab goes out there with a the little bell and goes ding, ding. <laughs> yeah. No, this yep. is. Da, 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 you know, that's like. Wow. You did that pretty well. Maybe they should record your voice to do that next year. I only get royalty checks of $50 <laughs> per use. So. Yeah, well, it's worth it. <laughs> and then, because I was in Kentucky, I had to sit down with Reed Nunnally. He is a second-generation lab owner who took a little bit of a different path than what we usually hear on the podcast. But Reed talks about learning the business and what Derby Dental Lab is doing to become the leader in clear aligners. So join us from the Whitmix Digital Forum with Allie, Mark, and Reed. Is zirconia giving your lab a hard time on your full arch cases? Yes, for me. Have you experienced warping or breakage in your centering oven? Yes, for me again. Have you ever had an arch return for adjustment and had to scrap it and start all over? Yes. So, there's a better way. Introducing Crystal Ultra Nano Ceramic by Digital Dental. The better alternative for full arch dentistry. A Crystal Ultra arch is 60% lighter than a Zirconia arch, is easily adjusted chair side, and can be milled on a one-to-one basis 
with no centering required. That saves you, what, 10 to 12 hours right there? Not only is a Crystal Ultra Arch better dentistry for patients, it's better for your lab as well. To learn more about the future of full arch dentistry, visit www.crystalultra.com forward slash voices. Crystal Ultra, feel the difference. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. These are cute. Is this swag? That If you want one, you can have one. I don't even know where I got I them. Want, I love swag. Yeah, they, Once you take a gift, it's your gift. Yeah, right? I'm all over it. Look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> all right. Here we are. Whitmix Digital Forum. Yes. With the Williamson family. <laughs> Mark has been on before. We talked to you in Chicago. Yes. Uh, 2019, and now Allie, who didn't want to join us in Chicago. Well, I was coaching him, so I just wanted to yeah. make sure everything was the going the way it needed to go. So telling yeah. him to smile, because that's, that's important. That's right. <laughs> you know, I'm holding his purse for him and things like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's, let's see. You guys work together at Ottawa. Correct. Correct. Allie, you're like an educator, right? You I am now, yes. So is what is your role there? So um, I started off as being the removable uh, dental technology educator. Yeah. And now I am segueing over to the fixed aspect also because I originally was trained in everything. I mean, I got an associate's degree in dental technology from Southern Illinois University nice. in Carbondale. That was ba- way back in the 80s, the 80s so I'm not, not going to say exactly what year. Late 80s. <laughs> late, late 80s. Not quite late 80s, but close enough. Yeah. And then when I went into the workforce professionally, I didn't know where I was going to go. I, I thought I was going to go into fixed, but they needed a, a removable technician at the time. As everybody always does. As everybody did. And I accepted the challenge, and I just kind of took off So you're trained fixed. Well, actually, I'm trained all. All. Yeah, okay. Right. But you liked the fixed side better. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, was, I, that's what I thought I was going to do. So which lab was this? Was this Ottawa? Or? Actually, no. This was back at Artistic Dental Studio. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, back when they were still in Darien, Illinois. Yeah. So I, I was there, and they put me in the fix. I mean, in the removable department. Yep. And I'm like, okay, well, let's do this. Yeah, and then yeah. within a couple of years, I was doing pretty good, and that's when I met yep. Mark. That's where we met. And um, you came in... I came in and um, merged my, I had a small laboratory. Oh, that's right, yeah. Year, and I merged with Artistic, and I was um, came in to run their removable department. Yeah. And that's where mm-hmm. I met Allie. Mm-hmm. So, so who hit on who first? Oh, yeah. It was <laughs> it was instantaneous. It's like a lightning bolt. Just oh, yeah. Hit it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been bliss ever since. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I can tell, tell by you. your expression that well, is no, Well, Mark always says, oh, it's like five minutes. It's only been like five minutes. But underwater. So, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. So. That's hilarious. So mm-hmm. here you are at Artistic, and you're an actual removable technician, or are you educating at this point? No, no, I'm a technician. Okay. I've been, I was a technician for, oh, gosh, I would have to say about 35 years. Mm. And being an educator is new to me. Okay. So I just started becoming an educator about a year and a half ago. Um, it'll be two years in so January. Why? Why did well, this what happened is that I, <laughs> as as a department manager, when I was um, working um, on on technical, I found that I was able to communicate and express to learning technicians um, what it is that they needed to know. Yeah. I, I guess you could say I kind of had a knack for it. So knowing that, I kind of started writing things down and making it as simple as possible for yeah. people to understand. Sure. And it was effective. So we, um, our company, now Ottawa Dental Laboratory, mm-hmm. saw that ability in me and um, asked me to be the removable trainer at the time. Nice. So we needed removable technicians. Yeah. So we were doing everything from the basic, you know, fundamentals of 
learning um, anatomy and physiology down to starting with preliminary bench work, bite rims, custom trays, yeah, like a lot yeah. of people learn. You utilize the PTC system. Do you? Quite a bit, yeah. love PTC. Yeah. Yeah. I love PTC. Um, it, Is that it, how you were trained? I, well, I was trained Air Force Manual from school. Ooh, okay. And then when I came to Ottawa Dental Lab, and this has been, what, 13 years now yeah. that we've been with Ottawa Dental yeah. Lab, they're a PTC lab. And I wasn't really exposed to PTC mm-hmm. until I started taking the courses. And I'm thinking, this is awesome because yeah. they really simplify it and they make it very basic yep. for someone, especially with not a lot of experience, to understand mm-hmm. and um, excellent results. And I, and, and I realized what I didn't know, thinking, oh, yeah, I've been doing this a while. I know, I know my yeah. stuff. Oops. And it was yeah, <laughs> it wasn't until I started getting exposed to PTC that I realized, yeah, I don't know a whole lot. And it made me relearn what I thought I already knew. Sure. So, so yeah. did you base your whole program at Ottawa based off PTC? It yeah. is. It yeah. is okay. based because off PTC. Because you have to have something to educate. You can't just be... Yeah, it's over-the-shoulder learning, and a lot of people Well, have that's learned, what every right? lab does, but and that's what even what we do, yeah. and it's not effective. Well, what it happens, works, but it's not effective. Yeah, right. what happens with over-the-shoulder is that you're only going to be as good as that technician. Yeah. So if that technician can't explain the fundamentals and, 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 the and without, yeah. without a doubt and, and give you measurable results, um, it, it's going to be difficult for a trainee to capture Absolutely. every detail. So with PTC, when, when I first went to PTC, I went um, and I did their complete denture program. And it just validated a lot of what I already knew, mm-hmm. but it also exposed me to a, a lot of what I didn't sure, realize sure, sure. I didn't know. So it also taught me how to train. That's a key thing because we, you know, if, if you get somebody that comes into the lab, you know, they don't know anything. I mean, a week ago they were probably working at, you know, yeah, Dairy Queen, yeah, yeah. and now they're, they're, you're, you're talking dental terminology to them. They're lost. And unless you continue to bring that up day after day after day, that terminology in words that they can understand also, yeah, sure. that it, it simplifies it for them and they can learn faster yeah. things. What a... How long is your program that you've put together? I mean, if, if you have an employee come and apply for a job mm-hmm. completely off the mm-hmm. street from Dairy Queen or mm-hmm. whatever, they start your program? That's correct. So right what we do is uh, we go through an assessment of hiring, first of sure. all. You know, they do phone interviews, and then from there they take aptitude tests. And, do you do you the know, Glidewell math test? Not, not, well, I think we do do a math test. I don't know if yeah. it's the Glidewell yeah, math right. test, but sure. we do do a math sure. test. And, yeah. you know, we want to make sure that they, they're trainable, yeah. you know. Let's, let's start with that. Absolutely. And then um, from there, they will start with the PTC program, and they'll learn the fundamentals of tooth sure. for morphology, anatomy, yep. and physiology. So it's, it's simplified uh, posterior anatomy. They'll do that for a week. They'll go through a series of, of tests, so to speak, cycles to see how much they're retaining. Um, and if they're going into the removable aspect, we'll put them also through another week mm-hmm. of uh, oral anatomy and physiology, which is talking about all of the edentulous aspects and, and tissue and muscles and bone structure. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So they'll go through that, and then once they have been able to go through that process successfully, then they'll go on to a hands-on training program, which is with me. And then I will teach them hands-on. So we have a a person that does the the book work. Her name is Leslie Whistler, and she is just an excellent, excellent trainer as far as knowing how to test. She is not a technician. But, but because um, she has the curriculum and the books, then she, yeah. can, she can teach that textbook sure. style. And then Allie will reinforce Right. And she's been trained through PTC as well. Yeah. So she's been trained on how to train. And then she's been with the company for like three or four years now. Yeah. 
so then when they come to me, they already have the terminology, mm-hmm. so I can speak the language now to them. Yep. Now it's yep. just a matter of getting them hands on and start giving them a little bit of experience and starting to, you know, practice. Yeah, start really. that muscle memory kind of thing. Oh yeah, 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 and it's not just with um, removable. It's like we, we'll start out maybe with model work. You know, learn how to pour stone. You know, they've never worked with stone before. Sure. Explain to them the different types of stone that are out there. You know, type, you know, one through four. And then, you know, how to hold a spatula, how to work the vibrator, yeah. how to use. Well, we call it the whip mix, but it's the VPM2. Yeah, we're and and way so the we're, you know, yeah. and, and I think one of the key things that we want our technicians to succeed. And obviously for our own benefit and oh, for sure. theirs, too. But we, we know that we have to simplify it for them to win. Too often we'll go into a lab and we're like, here, here's a tooth. Make, it, make your tooth look like this tooth. Yeah. It's like, you know, that's not fair. No. So we, we tell them, okay, here are the fundamentals. Let's start with this. Every tooth is going to have this. So let's get to point A. We get there. Okay, fine. Now we're going to mix it on to, to point B, and we're going to incorporate other details. Everybody's there. Okay, fine. Yep, yep. And everybody follows a step-by-step procedure until we go down the list and everything is, is talked about and learned. Now it's just a matter of applying everything you just learned and putting it to your one case. Wow. So it, it's very simplified and user-friendly, our program. We also, not only do we do that to train our technicians, but existing technicians that, that we have. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you get set in your ways oh. and you kind of forget, oh, wait. Right. <laughs> or bad habits get yeah, passed down. Absolutely. Or, or they'll say, well, I do it this mm-hmm. way. And, and when they maybe are trying to show a younger technician, they don't tell them why. It's just, just do it this way. So right. Where the PTC really kind of explains all of that. Right. So. And I'm not saying that we're, you know, our company is doing everything perfectly right now. I mean, we still stumble and sure. we still try to, sure. we, we learn from what, you know, what is effective, what's not effective. Um, but what we'll do is we'll try to get everybody on the same page. So managers and owners and technicians, we're all trying to reach the same goal and we all know the same things. So that way, there's no miscommunication on, hey, wait a minute, you left out this landmark. Yeah, hey, yeah, wait yeah. a minute, you didn't consider this. And you can you can identify that easily. So have all the managers at Ottawa gone through this program? Yes. All, all the technicians. All of yeah. them. How mm-hmm. long? In that I, amount of time? And Well, yeah. It's wow. like, and we have over, well, we well, have over I'd 200 employees. Well, I've been before we were with them. So right. a lot of them had already, some of the managers that were already working there had already gone through that yeah. but any of the new people that come in that everybody goes through any that. technician yeah. that walks through the door and is going to be working in production is going to go through ptc wow mm-hmm. well and you have to train right i mean we have no schools you know it's got to come yeah, from sure. somewhere and by having this curriculum through ptc it just makes smart sense it's already put together for do you do like yeah. classes or is it every time you hire someone they that one person goes through it well or? some it's usual usually individually but really? we might hire say two or three people at the same time yeah okay so those three people we're gonna are gonna go through the ptc program all at the same time anybody not make it Anybody? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Everybody's yeah. like, this is too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good to know that early. Well, that's just it. Right. And that's yeah. the whole idea. You want to be able to identify who is going to be trainable. And, and it's who is funny not. because you'll see some people just different levels. Out of the three people, you might find one that, oh, this person's going to be pretty good. Rock and, star. And this oh, one, yeah. you know, I think had, definitely has potential and we'll have to work with them. So it's nice that you can put them on different tracks. And it probably allows you time to assess where they're going to be the best in the lab. Exactly. Absolutely. So by the time they finish, you're like, you're going to be perfect in the yeah. model room. Exactly. You're going to be perfect doing this. Exactly. exactly. And it's not just hands-on and, and, you know, bench work. It's also CAD. So yeah. we'll put them through, you know, a, a PTC training program for CAD. Yeah, I saw that and at their booth that yeah. they offer three shape. It's training. excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you guys so. use three shape. Yep. Yep. We use three shape. Awesome. Yeah. That's and carbon printers. Ninety nine percent of what we use. Mm-hmm. So maybe you don't want to answer this, but feel free to say no. If you bring someone in and they go through this program, are they required to work there for so long? Or can they get this amazing training you're offering and then well, come work at Summer Dental Lab? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, well, they're they're not committed. No. I mean, you know, we I think we just 
with what our company has to offer and where we're going, most of them stay. Well, of course. We have a yeah. lot of people that have been with the company a and long time. And that's the thing, Elvis, is that, you know, everybody's like, oh, well, you know, you're going to build these technicians and all, and then what if they leave? It's like, well, our company doesn't give them a reason to leave, so that's not a, that's not an issue. That's so we're awesome, we're right. okay with that, you yeah. know. So can we, I send employees to Ottawa <laughs> to, to train? Right. But promise you won't. Offer yeah, that no, sorry. Right, if you yeah. want the training from this gal, you're gonna have to come that's and awesome. work well, and for Ottawa. And what's kind of nice too, with, um, we're, we we pride ourselves on having. I think we have like I think I mentioned last time we had like a 22, 23 CDT. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And so we have a Ellie uh, or the company that allowed Ellie to kind of facilitate a study club that technicians can do on their own time after work. Kind of meet with Ellie. Ellie's got a whole curriculum together, and so we have probably almost. 50 people. We have 49 people preparing involved in the study the group, study and, group. And they'll break off in little groups and study on their own, and then they meet once a month, kind of go over, mm-hmm. you know, with what Allie's developed. Well, see, that was the thing, is the that, company. you know, as our technicians get more experience, you yeah. know, they want, to, they want challenges, and they want to, you know, continue in their career path. And one of the goals is to become a CDT. It's one of their personal goals, and it's one of our company's goals. We, we encourage that. Yeah. So, um... What's hard is, though, we want that. Even though we want that, how do they go about getting it? That was the overwhelming part. It's a part. scary first step. Well, yeah, and, and you got to consider that, you know, these technicians, um, you know, they outside of work, they probably have kids. You oh, know, yeah. they have, um, they you know, they might have health issues where they have to do something. Or, you know, they might even have another job. It's just a, they have a life. So they have a <laughs> life. And it's difficult for them to prepare for it. So it's overwhelming. And then, you know, usually, typically somebody will just say, okay, here's the website to, you know, get your CDT. Have yeah. a nice day. Yeah, good yeah, luck good to luck. you. Yeah. So what we've done for our employees that if you're seeking to get certification... We, I, in, in lack of better terms, we kind of did the homework for them. So we went online, and we downloaded the study guide. Yep. And then we gathered all the resources that are recommended by the study guide. Mm-hmm. Then we break it down. The study guide is an eight-month you know, curriculum, so we broke it down into eight months. Each month, we print and we bind all the information that's to be studied for that month, and wow. we treat it like a book club. So we gather for, you know, the first month. Here's all the information you're going to learn or yeah. Yeah, read. And then next month you come back, we talk about it, and then you're going to get your information for the next month. And we'll do that until, you know, the course is done. Yeah, I like that. It's not just a you up there telling them the information. No. They learn it on their right. own. Well, and that's and just it. Everyone's like, well, you know, you're going to teach us this. I'm like, I'm not going to teach you anything. Yeah. I, go, I don't know this stuff either. You know, Are you it's a like, CDT? I am a okay, CDT. Good. Yes, okay. I am. <laughs> and, um, yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't walk the walk if I, <laughs> if I can't back it up, right? What we do is try to get all the resources prepared for these technicians yeah. to win. Because their win is our win. So, sure. Yeah. So, do you guys yeah. offer the uh, the testing at Ottawa? We do. I thought so. Yeah, yeah we I do. I saw that. That's yeah. cool. That makes yeah. it real convenient, too. Very convenient. Although now the testing is going to be for the comprehensive all written. Online. It's all going to be online. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I'm pretty excited and about that, actually. I think it's, yeah. you know, I think it it's a great a idea. Because it's, it's, it's hard you know. travel for a lot of people. Right. Yeah. It we have a CDT mean. that went from Indiana all the way, had to go to North Carolina to get it. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Just because of that time of the year, and that's where it was. Well, see, and that's just it. And I think for, like, the hands-on, if we have enough people, you know, we could just have it at our facility, yeah. and then it, it would be, you know, does open Ottawa, to anybody. Does Ottawa but. pay for the testing for the employees? Absolutely. Yeah. I call awesome. it the ODL scholarship. And, and I love it, it pays for their renewal every year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and also, our, we have different levels. You know, technicians come in at, a, like, a level one, obviously. Yeah certain tasks they have to do for a certain amount they can level out now they're level two and that kind of applies with their pay scale sure and so to become once a level four pay scale you one of the requirements is you have to be a cdt to be so, to hit level yes. four right nice. right 
Nice. So, so it's just advantageous to get it right. And yeah. it's good for you, you know, the person becoming a CDT. They've accomplished something on their own. You know, just kind of reinforces what they're doing, makes them more valuable, and and it's a win-win for everybody, and especially for our clients and, and their patients. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So at I, the end of the day, train. that's what it's for. I love labs that support their employees getting CDT. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I, you know, and Mark and I have been around for a while, you know, and I would have to say. Ottawa Dental Lab is probably one of the most dedicated labs that I know of for education. Yeah. So no, definitely. It sounds like you guys are killing it. Yeah. So it's nice that we have the resources. Yeah, it's nice yeah. to have the resources, right. and that's. I mean, that's honestly, the best thing. when at our lab, if someone comes in and has no idea, they sit down at a bench. That's and how they I just start picking yeah. it up, and yeah. at the same time of them picking it up. They're also doing production. Right, sure. right. right. Just, it's not a right. good way to learn no. anything. Not the most not ideal. Not just but our industry, just everything. Right. So right. I, I think what you guys are doing is amazing. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you I so much. I hope every other lab yeah. can pick well, up Well, and I, like I said, I think hats off to the Caruso family for, yeah, absolutely. you know. Obviously. Yeah, for investing in, in, in their, because a lot of times, you know, they're like, well, you know what, we'll reimburse you after you do it. It's yeah, like, yeah. no, they're taking care of us from the front end. That's good. So, because it, it, that's an issue, too, for a lot of technicians. It's like, well, I don't and have the, don't the have resources the right now. I don't have the funds. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, no, that's not, that. we don't want that to be a concern. Yeah, so it's, it's, not a, it's not a reimbursement. It's a it's an investment in that employee's That's future. correct. Yeah. That is correct. How long so. have you guys been there? 13 years. Wow. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. 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 Nice. And, and, you're, and you were telling me before we got started, you guys don't drive to the lab together. No. No. I mean, Only because we, <laughs> we used to. <laughs> we used to drive to the lab together. Oh, but yeah. then then we, you know, he's waiting for me to finish, yeah. you know, getting ready. And then we don't have time for coffee and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So now, well, and I was telling you also, we drive to work in silence because we're like, okay, getting ready for the day. Yeah, yeah. We drive home from work together in silence because we're just done with the day. <laughs> I'm always amazed by people that can work together and be But we've married. always have. Ellie and I have always worked Since together. Since the day we met. Like, that's, you know, that's from different. artistic yeah. days where we met. So we've always worked together. We've from always then. worked and together. So yeah, it's not, yeah. It's that's that's normal for us. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. working with him, I think, would be weird. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. how much do you talk about work at home? Um, uh, we do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Not it varies. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, okay, I don't want to talk to work. Yeah. You know, let's just go home. Let's, eventually we end up talking about it anyway. Yeah, sure. we do. Yeah. 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 So. so, you know, our That's our fine. idea of dinner conversation is talking about, hey, did you see that new printer that came in? Yeah. And, you know, it's like, oh, okay. Or did you listen to Voices from the Back? Yeah. There That's you go. right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> you mean we're not being played during dinner? That's right. 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 Background. Right. Background. Alexa. Hurry, get your dinner. <laughs> We're on there. Um, Alexa, right? play Voices from the Bench. Yeah. There, there you, you go. go. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys sitting down. Well, it was our <laughs> pleasure. Great, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for yeah. what you're doing. This is, this is great. Yeah, so many different it. interviews cool. that you've done. And you're Some speaking today, people. aren't you? Is it today or uh, tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to speak with Corey Lambertson with Whitmex. He's going to talk about digital designing dentures and post-processing, and we'll talk about some characterization utilizing some of the Annex Dent products. Of so. removables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, removables. Yeah. Cool. yeah, so that'll be tomorrow. We're mm -hmm. actually, cool. we're the last ones, so they oh, saved the best for the last. Thing. Yeah. Saving the best for last. <laughs> yeah. You're the one we're all going to be talking about on the drive home. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. How come you're not good. speaking? Uh, are you kidding me? No. I coach him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm his muse, I like to think. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't do a lot of it without her, with her support. And things. Yeah. So, no, yeah. it's been great. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys are a great team. I love well, it. Well, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see you back inside. Absolutely. All thank right. you so much. You bet. Appreciate it. So we're here at the Whitmix Digital Forum with Reed Nunnally. Am I saying that right? You are. Reed Nunnally from Nunnally. Derby Dental Lab. How far are you away from this location here? You know, we're probably five minutes from Whitmix, five nice. minutes from here, so nice. we're close. Do you uh, stop by Whitmix to pick up your products so you don't have to pay for the shipping and everything? We do. Heck yeah. We pull the truck up and they <laughs> put it in the back and drive it up to the loading dock. Nice. Nice. So tell me about Derby. Are, you're the owner of it. Your father started it? It is. So it's second generation. Okay. Father, David Nunley, founded it in the uh, mid, mid 80s. Mid 80s. You know, my brother worked uh, yeah. with Derby for a while. Uh, he's a dentist now, and then uh, kind of, I did a couple things before real estate, construction, and stuff, and then 
was looking for that next path and uh, kind of made a fit with my father. He was looking to give up uh, a little more yeah. control. Technology was coming in, just kind of being uh, 2010 is when I so came into the So did you grow up working in the lab or you no. had no interest? No. So, uh, you know, we're fortunate to be part of the Tarek group and CNC and have, have a lot sure. of relationships. And I can't tell you how many second generation people talk about Growing being in the model up. room yeah. and growing up. And I, all I love the when people say, I was casting bugs. I was like, eh. Yeah, no. <laughs> My father, the way he showed, you know, his love for his family was working yeah. hard and building a business. And uh, we just weren't really part of that really? as a kid. Yeah. Interesting. So, I mean, I would go in it here or there, but no, yeah. I didn't really grow up uh, funny. in the business. So, I mean, even 2010, you know, being a grown adult, I'm, what? What do you really do? You so, know, I, I know you make teeth, but I don't know much about so it. So as, as little as 10 years ago, you still weren't in the business. Correct. And you were doing real estate or something. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then all of a sudden he, he decided it's time. It was just uh, yeah, kind of a perfect storm. Yeah. We were growing a little bit. Uh, the market was shifting a lot in 2010. Mm -hmm. A little post-recession. You know, what, what, what do you figure out? Uh, figure out? Zirconia was, uh, you know, sure. we were yep. starting that kind of the digital revolution or what you would call it yep. in that area. And uh, lucky for me, I came into a vision that was already in the works, right? I didn't walk into a completely analog, this is the way it needs to be, and we should change. Your dad already started that progression We already had, it. yeah, he was, yeah. he was an early uh, adopter with technology. You know, we weren't a uh, lava lab, but we <laughs> yeah, were a yeah, Sircon yeah. lab. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we had, uh, I want to say probably 2007 or eight. we bought our first 3D printer, um, really? That and, is early. Uh, never, I think we spent $100,000 and never got a functional part off of it. I mean, it was just way before its time. Yeah. Uh, you still have it in the closet? Cinebad. No, we should have when yeah. we moved facilities. There was kind of this uh, iconic moment where sure. we all threw it in the dumpster and <laughs> cheered. And, uh, but, you know, that's uh, lucky with Tarek and yep. communicating with, with friends and stuff on business that uh, – you know, we kind of ate that one for the team. Yeah, we, we, nice. We, no, don't don't go buy this piece of equipment. It's uh, <laughs> it's not there yet. So, uh, we haven't made that mistake since. But yeah, yeah, no, came into uh, we had already kind of moved on from Zircon at that point. We uh, one of the kind of first early on open architecture zirconia was uh, the dental mill, digital okay. dental, Carpowitz and those guys digital out of dental. Uh, yeah. out of California. And, yeah, we know uh, them well. Yeah, so we had a we had a couple dent mills and uh, started going and. You know, we, we built a pretty good business. So when you came into it not knowing it much, what what was your role? Just to learn? Um, so I would say we were a small business that had grown into, you know, starting to need some more operational structures, administrative side and stuff like that. So early roles, I mean, you know, was uh, just, I mean, first of all, it was just HR type stuff. We need a handbook. Yeah, you know, we've yeah, got yeah, employees. Yeah, yeah. We need, you know, just just some of that basic Sm things that small businesses don't worry about. Sure, exactly. So you know, it was my father and his uh, uh, his assistant, and that was that was our office. When you came into it, what's your technician size? I would say we were probably close to thirty technicians. Yeah. Still decent at size. that time. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my father is a he was a uh, a wonderful businessman but was not a fantastic technician. So really? he went through business after business in his youth. He, he never had a boss. He always did independent things. And when he moved, my, my grandfather's a dentist. My, my uncle, you know, his brother is a dentist. So, so a lot was, of teeth talk at Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> my mom had to always tailor uh, the tooth talk. So, yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, so yeah, he, you know, he kind of, he was looking for his next venture. He owned a key market, a meat market, a produce store paint and wallpaper he, he did all these little businesses and and i think he just looked at that this is going to be a hard job for a long time and maybe it's not this isn't my my long-term fit his his father was a dentist and said i paid my dental lab a lot of you know a nice yeah, little yeah. nice little check uh, other than staff it's my biggest bill so he's like well what's what is this so he had two small kids he went back to school when he already had a family we kind of scraped by for a little while sure. and then he got into the dental lab world and his first customer was his father and yeah, of course, um, so he worked with uh, my grandfather and his, and, and his brother for a little while, and then lovingly, I don't I don't know the real story, but I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe six months in, a year in, or something, he sat down with my father and showed him the work that he was getting from my father, and the work that he should be getting. Oh, you that's know, a hard conversation to yeah, have. That it was, uh, you know, he's uh, again a good businessman, but he wasn't putting out the best 
PFM or full cast yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. it was at that point. You know, so he thought at that point, okay, well, I'm not the best at doing this, but, uh, you know, I know how to run a business uh, and have employees. So he started hiring the best techs around, you know, his sure. friends that he went to school with and, and stuff like that. And so he's, he's never really been a hands-on technician. Mm-hmm. Uh, he certainly knows it well, uh, had a CDT and everything, but uh, – he, just started. he is a CDT. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he passed uh, coming up on three years. Um, just three uh, years ago he yeah. became a CDT. No, no, I'm sorry. He oh. passed away. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry mis- so, misunderstood. So he's been a CDT, I would say, since the early 80s nice. in, in, in Kentucky, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, Bennett was talking about earlier at the at the meeting here. You have to have a CDT to be a dental laboratory in the state of Kentucky. Oh, so you guys have regulation. So we have regulatory awesome. here. So, awesome. So he got that in 1987 when uh, uh, I think he got out of school in 86, started the business in 87 and got that. So uh, his whole purpose of becoming a CDT was to open the lab. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he kind of needed that. And uh, we have probably, gosh, 17 or 18 CDTs nice. on staff. Nice. So it, it's a big part of what we do. Uh, but, yeah, I came into the business um, 2010 pretty much for a year, just kind of shadowed. Watched how he did, yeah. what he, you know, how he operated and all that. And then he slowly started, you know, kind of handing this over, that over. And I think it just worked out time-wise. Yeah. Um, where he was, I think uh, the decision-making was maybe similar. So it, it was like maybe three years in, he was very out of the day-to-day operation. Really? You know, yeah. so um, kind of jumped right into that. And then he was diagnosed with cancer and was pretty much out of the business, Um right away sure. you know so it was kind of this overnight type thing so yeah. luckily i had already had a few years working with him understanding the business and all that and uh it was probably probably the best i mean i love what we do now i love our liner business the growth yeah, yeah. that we're having and all that cool stuff but my favorite still to date couple years in the laboratory was allowing him to fight his fight and not have to worry not about worry a about paycheck it. and, and all how he's going to support himself yeah. and all the employees and stuff like that so uh, that was pretty awesome. That is great. Yeah, let's talk about that. So you're here speaking, uh, the gentleman that was speaking, what was his Nick, name? Nick, Nick Windlow. Nick yes. Windlow. He's here talking about your guys' clear aligner business. Now, we all know clear aligners are huge in our business they right are. now. How did you get into it? So, uh, again, just trying to think about, and I like teeth, uh, you know, but yeah, I'll, sure. I'll, I'll be the first to say I'm not the passionate technician. I'm yeah. not a hands-on guy. I like the business side of it a Have lot. Have you ever I'll, made anything? No. Maybe. I mean, I mean, construction-wise, but not yeah, yeah, a, not no, in the yeah. middle space. Yeah, me neither, so no. we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the business. I love the people and all that. And and through my father's relationships, I've been able to build them. You know, it's it's I've gotten to know just countless amazing people sure. in the industry. And we kind of, you know, ro- we were early into zirconia. We obviously didn't invent the space. It was kind of a Me Too product. But we were able to jump in early and really become that kind of leader in our region. Yep. We grew a big, big business with it. And that is the interest level in zirconia is, I hate to say it's somewhat commoditized, but it has. Oh, very much so. You know, it's, it's, it's a pricing game now yep. from us squeezing vendors on material price to doctors to us to, to patient reimbursement. So yep. so we did that, and that was great. And we grew the business. And then it was kind of like, okay, what's, what's new? What's cool? What's next? We're growing a removal department, and that's fantastic. We've, mm. we've got our implant department, which we've been growing. We've run in a little sleep, but we we're trying to find, you know, what what is out there? What is interesting? What is different that we, uh, the way I try to look at it is everyone and the mother can make zirconia right yeah. now. Yeah. Early on, when we were buying $80,000 mills and all this, there were barriers to entry. Absolutely. Now there's milling centers, and there's very affordable equipment. You know, a one I've got a great friend in northern Kentucky that has a uh, Dave Klein who has a, you know, it's him. He has a one-person lab. He has a printer. He has a scanner. He has a mill. And, you know, he does everything. So everyone can do that now, yep. which is uh, which is great. But it didn't allow us a mechanism to continue to grow our business. Sure, so sure. I get it. We were looking into what has a barrier to entry. What is something that's niche but not too niche that we can't really grow it to something big? And it was... I hate to say, of all, of all the companies in the aligner space, um, I had heard of Smile Direct Club. Yeah, yeah. The direct-to-consumer. And this was probably two and a half years ago. I'll say probably a little over three years ago, started thinking about it. Seeing, you know, you'd heard of Invisalign. Mm-hmm. We, we have yeah. a very small, we have a couple people that have been wired. We do a very small ortho business. But we were looking into how do we, you know, ortho might be a good space. 
And then I know a lot of uh, some ortho labs, and I mean, they, the average ortho product sells for just you know a, a very small amount, and you have to. And it's just it, it's a complex business, very hard. And but then we started looking at clear liners, and yeah. uh, you know, we saw Small Direct came out, and I said, why? Well, you know, how can they do that? I've really only heard of Invisalign at this point, so we looked into it, and I had you know an attorney kind of do a, a you know look into the business component of it to see is this something that is viable you know are, are they and, and there were there's clear crack there's a couple yeah, other yeah, players yeah. in there but there were all sorts of lawsuits out there that's and a lot, what lot i of worry issues. about honestly so, <laughs> yeah yeah so when we got into it it was really you know first off can we do it yeah and we got a business perspective that said yes there are main key patents expiring they were in the future still sure no so we all know like, about that you know yeah. so at that point they hadn't expired yet and then i went to uh ids in Germany for the first time, yeah. 2017, and I had a clear focus, no pun intended, on uh, <laughs> on looking at aligners. And in Europe, there were a plethora of really? companies Is it starting yeah. to up and come, and there are some big players. And so I just started digging into it, and then we looked at what does it take to get into that, right? Yeah. And it is a very highly regulated class two medical device, so you have to have 510K, FDA, yeah, all this yeah, sort of stuff. That. You look into what it costs up front to get in. Then you look into this, you know, what you need to grow that business. And it, it was a bit risky, right? There's a lot of upfront investment, a lot of equipment, a lot of regulatory. We had to have the right people that knew how to do it. So we actually kind of went out and we're, we're very fortunate to get some people that know the Clearliner space very well, mm-hmm. already manufactured them. And uh, so we kind of had all the pieces of the puzzle and just needed to say, you know, to, to go with it. So... It took probably a you know it was uh, it, we're about a year into offering that product. Wow! So it took almost two years, a little over two years, to kind of get from you know A to to Z where we could actually offer the product, know that we're putting out a good quality product. So last year at this point we had two employees, uh, outfitted a little little space in yeah. our building, and and you know right now I think we've we're, we're in the forties. Wow, just for the clear just aligner. clear aligner business right in now. the same building as Derby. We are so our yeah. parking's a little crazy. We're yeah. double parking and all that. So uh, we're looking at another facility. Yeah, uh, we'll, we should be moving into it uh, the beginning of of twenty twenty. That's exciting. It is, and and uh, the part that with uh, with it so far. I mean, we went through all that, and then we looked at how do we how do we sell this product, right? Yeah, we had, we're a regional laboratory. We could sell it to our regional doctors, but. I can't just do a little business with That's what I was going to do a big business. I mean, did it start with you selling it through Derby? Um, No. When we started the business, we were looking at what avenue is the best one to go with. And one was us sell to our doctors, and one was us trying to find partners. And, you know, so more kind of the more the the retail line versus the wholesale avenue. And it made a lot more sense for us in the way that we operate. To try to go the wholesale route. Yeah. Um, we don't have multi-million dollar marketing budgets. We're not We're not a national laboratory. We have no want to be a national laboratory sure. with, with Derby Dental. You don't want to be the Glidewell of the Midwest? Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he's got one a mile from me. Oh, right? does he? Yeah, he's got oh, a crown world about a, about a mile from us. So, But uh, for us, that, that was – it made the best sense. And we do sell aligners to our current – Doctors. Yeah, sure. We, we have a small little liner business, and, and you know, it, it works out just great. But then we thought, how about we find partners that kind of do exactly what we do? We sell in our local region. Yeah. We get a handful of cases a day. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a very easy value proposition to talk with a partner laboratory about. Yeah. Um, so that, that's what I've loved about it is, you know, the interface here is, is through the friendships. We've always, I've always had peer-to-peer, but now to be able to, to work with a lot of Absolutely. our friends and stuff and has, has been great. All your partnership labs are labs that don't want to go through the FDA. I don't, nobody, nobody has a desire to do yeah. that. Yeah. And if so. you do, that's great. I mean, yeah. you know, but it's, you really have to kind of go all in. Yeah. into that space so and that's that was our hope again we can grow a nice little business but then let's partner with 50 100 200 laboratories around yeah. the nation and then it turns into a to a nice big business you know we can make a, a nice profit and then you know our partner laboratories can as well and just kind of creates a win-win so that's it's awesome. it's been great that's great that is fantastic Hey, I appreciate you sitting down with me, Reed. Of course. It's nice to finally actually meet you. Yeah. I enjoy seeing all your classic cars that you're picking <laughs> up. Those things are amazing. Uh, on social media there? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'll try to, try to get in them a little more often than I do. Yeah, my wife loves the, uh, the truck that you got. 
Yeah. That thing's killer. Yeah. So. Picked up a 53 uh, Chevy truck. It's, uh, it's beautiful. It's pretty special. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Absolutely. Well, appreciate it. Again, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks for your time, yeah. Elvis. Bye. Today's episode is brought to you by Kettenbach. Let's talk about impressions and impression materials. Can we agree that not all incoming records your lab receives are equal in quality or have captured the details you feel necessary to move forward confidently with a fixed removable or implant case? NADL studies show that small, medium, and large labs all face the same awful situation of producing remakes at no charge over and over again when it might not be the lab's fault. Kettenbach and their team of manufacturer reps are here to help your lab by offering support and solutions, not chairside milling units, that will improve the incoming clinical results and consistency you and your clients are looking to achieve. Their materials are manufactured in Germany using patented technology, and in America they only sell direct for less cost. Visit www.kettenbach-dental.us to learn more about Panacell, Identium, and Silgenet impression materials, Futar bite registration, Thistilis temp material and core buildup, Mucopin soft degree line, and airway metrics. Kettenbach also offers materials used every day in the dental lab, in particular the Panacell Lab Putty Hard and Lab Putty Soft. These materials can be cleanly and easily dispensed in a one-to-one -one putty matrix. There are no messy accelerator gels with this system. The Panacell Lab Putty is sold in two 5kg buckets of base and catalyst and is definitely the dimensional, stable lab putty material you have been looking for. Try any of the materials risk-free today by calling Kettenbach Direct at 877-532-2123. Mention the code Dental Lab Podcast 25 and you will receive an additional 25% off your order. Once again, call Kettenbach Direct at 877-532-2123 to make the connection with a partner who can help your lab and your clients save money and increase quality coming in and going out. Thanks for your support, Kettenbach. So a super big thanks to Allie and Mark Williamson, as well as Reed Nunnally, for sitting down with my partner Elvis at the Whitmix Digital Forum. I love how the Williamsons met in the lab and they continue to work together at the lab, sharing their passion for the industry together, which I might add, that probably takes a lot of hard work being married and working together. So kudos to you guys. Or maybe they just do it really naturally and they just get along in and out of the lab. It's like they mentioned in the interview, they don't know any better. <laughs> yeah, yes, so. No. And what Allie is doing at Ottawa is nothing short of amazing. Thank you for what you do. I wish every lab had the resources to train like they do, including mine. And for Reed, for taking the reins of his established dental lab and taking it to the next level. If you're thinking about offering clear aligners in your lab, we recommend you check out their Smile Shapers. I like that tagline too, Smile Shapers. Do you guys do any clear aligners or partner up with anybody? No, mm -mm, yeah, we do can. not. Are you thinking about it? It's right up your alley, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm definitely thinking about it. I've been educating myself. I sit with Reed on the uh, Cal Lab board, so I get the pleasure of uh, picking his brain, and he's amazing and he's smart, so we'll see. Yeah. But they've got it. I mean, yeah. they're, they're kicking butt. Next week, we have a set of interviews with three speakers for the Vision 21 meeting in January. Remember, it's never too early to register and make plans. It's the 16th to the 18th in Vegas at the Palms. It's going to be an amazing meeting. Check for the link on this episode's show notes. And remember, if you have never been to a Vision 21 and you are from a lab, you can actually save $200 on registering. And right after that, on January 24th and 25th, we are going to be at what's called the Voices of Dentistry. Held every year in Scottsdale, Arizona, this event is nothing but a dental podcast summit. Say that four times. <laughs> say that four times. Dental podcast summit. How many people are going to be there when they say dental podcast? How many podcasts are there? Do you remember from last year? Wow. Well, actual dental podcasts, I would probably say there's roughly around 200 of them. You're me. <laughs> yeah, there's tons of them. And ones that actually show up, 
I think last year the list was around 30, hmm. and I think it's going to even be bigger this year. But I went last year, and I kind of felt like a chicken in a wolf house. I mean, I was the only lab person there. I would like to see more technicians go to this event as an attendee. I really think this is a good chance for us to strengthen the bond between laboratory and dentist. You might spend a lot of time going to laboratory technician events, but I think it's smart of us to go to a few dentist events to kind of get into their mindset, and I think we'd all work better together if we did that. Just as much as I'd want dentists to come to laboratory events. I think it's smart on both sides. Yeah, well, we're a whole heck of a lot more fun, just saying. I will say, and I agree, but I will say that this event, Voices of Dentistry, is a lot different than most conferences. Oh, you actually say that, that they had a good time. You had a good time there. It was pretty nuts. I mean, I thought laboratory people had a lot of fun after the event, but these people are crazy. (laughs) it's not your usual stuck up snobby conference it's fun it's casual i think they did karaoke it was just a lot of fun i had a great time cool i think it's a good way for us to learn more about our clients and for them to learn about us so just remember voices of dentistry 24th to the 25th in scottsdale arizona link to register on this episode show notes awesome look forward to it Can't wait. We're going live. I think they're putting us on stage live, aren't they? I think we will be on stage once. I think they Mm. allow all of us to record on stage in front of people. Wow. Are you going to wear your yellow chicken costume that you wore to the race for the future? That was Pikachu. Don't show your (laughs) age. Um, No, I don't think I will. (laughs) All right. Just checking because I just want to make sure I know what I'm getting into. Why are you going to wear a chicken outfit too? No. It would be awkward if you did and I didn't. So. <laughs> no, I'm not. But hey, that still could happen though. You know, you never know. Hey, never say never. Never say never. All right. All right. We want to give a shout out to our sponsors this week. We can't thank enough Digital Dental and Kettenbach. We appreciate your support. Yes, I will say, uh, but thank you, Digital Dental. They're actually uh, repairing and putting all kinds of stuff back into about four of our mills right now. So I appreciate you personally and professionally. So thank you. Is that because you let the mills go to neglect? Is that why? No, it's because they're like 10 years old and we send them back and we get them rebuilt. So I'm stoked because, yeah, they're they're workhorses. They're amazing. We've got, like what I said, almost 15 of them. But um, yeah, some of them are a little bit older and we send them back. They got them and they rebuild them and they come back good as new. So thank you. That is nuts that you have 15 of them. Yeah, I know. Can you imagine how much they're calling? No, I can't. Whole oh, a lot, just saying. That's <laughs> the first time you've had to beat me out in months. I've been so good. Yeah, where have you been? I don't know. I'm just in a good spirits today, so. And... Bum, bum, bum. It's going to be 67 degrees tomorrow in Florida as the high. And that, my friend, is when us Floridians wear boots and coats and sweatshirts. Yeah. Uh, I, know. I, know you, I know. I know. I know what you, you're thinking. I know. <laughs> I know you can't see me right now. <laughs> Are you flicking me actually, off? <laughs> I'm actually flicking you off. Oh, how did I know that? But I'm just so excited because we got a cold front. It looks like winter and I love it. I'm going to go for a really long, super long run. 67. That's my winner. <laughs> We're above freezing for the first time this week. So I'm happy. So there you go. Come on down. Thinking about it. All right, everybody. That's all we got. We'll talk to you next week. See ya. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.